Hello everyone, welcome to We're With Traveling With Jesus. Today, August 10th, 2021, Elis Gunawan from Los Angeles, California, USA, and Vina from Denpasar, Bali, will read a book from Catholic liturgical calendar and read a story of St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. For formation teaching, it's about fear, read by Sister Judy Bow, missionaries of God's love from the OGCC Canberra, Australia. After formation teaching part, let's we pray together with Pope Francis for the recovery of the world from the COVID-19 virus. Happy listening! Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to Weary Traveling with Jesus channel, a channel of holy gospel readings available in three languages, Indonesia, English, and Italian. Now you can access the reading in Indonesia and English separately every day and the readings in Italian available only on Sunday. We hope you enjoy it. Today's saint of the day is Saint Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. A brilliant philosopher who stopped believing in God when she was 14, Edith Stein was so captivated by reading the autobiography of Teresa of Avila that she began a spiritual journey that led to her baptism in 1922. Twelve years later, she imitated Saint Teresa by becoming a Carmelite, taking the name Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. Born into a prominent Jewish family in Brislau, Germany, now Rocklaw, Poland, Edith abandoned Judaism in her teens. As a student at the University of Göttingen, she became fascinated by phenomenology, an approach to philosophy. Excelling as a protege of Edmund Husserl, one of the leading phenomenologists, Edith earned a doctorate in philosophy in 1916. She continued as a university teacher until 1922, when she moved to a Dominican school in Speer. Her appointment as lecturer at the Educational Institute of Munich ended under pressure from the Nazis. After living for four years in the Cologne Carmel, Sister Teresa Benedicta moved to the Carmelite Monastery in Echt, Netherlands, in 1938. The Nazis occupied that country in 1940. In retaliation for being denounced by the Dutch bishops, the Nazis arrested all Dutch Jews who had become Christians. Teresa Benedicta and her sister Rosa, also a Catholic, died in a gas chamber in Auschwitz on August 9, 1942. Pope John Paul II beatified Teresa Benedicta of the Cross in 1987 and canonized her 12 years later. What we can learn from her story is the writings of Edith Stein fill 17 volumes many of which have been translated into English. A woman of integrity, she followed the truth wherever it led her. After becoming a Catholic, Edith continued to honor her mother's Jewish faith. Sister Josephine Kupol, translator of several of Edith's books, sums up the saint with the phrase, learn to live at God's hands. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Holy Spirit, beloved of my soul, I adore you. Enlighten me, guide me, console me, tell me what I should do. Give me your orders. 
I submit myself to all that you desire of me and to accept all that you permit to happen to me. Let me only know your will. Amen. First reading from Book of Corinthians Brother and sisters, whoever saw sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. It much do as already determined, without sadness or compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Moreover, God is able to make every grace abundant for you, so that in all things, always having all you need, you may have an abundance for every good work. Daily Readings, August 10, 2021 Feast of St. Lawrence, Deacon and Martyr Responsorial Psalm With response, Bless the man who is gracious and lends to those in need. Bless the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delight in his commands, his posterity shall be mighty upon the earth. The upright generation shall be blessed. Bless the man who is gracious and lends to those in need. Well for the man who is gracious and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. He shall never be moved. The just one shall be in everlasting remembrance. Bless the man who is gracious and lends to those in need. An evil report he shall not fear. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steadfast, he shall not fear, till he looks down upon his foes. Bless the man who is gracious and lends to those in need. Lavishly he gives to the poor. His generosity shall endure forever. His horn shall be exalted in glory. Bless the man who is gracious and lends to those in need. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life, says the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Gospel reading from Book of John. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, Amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, people doing formation. I'm Judy Bow. And um, our topic today is fear. The fourth fear that we're talking about is a, a fear of separation. So we're intrinsically created for community. So we sometimes fear separation. And this fear could be generated through times when we felt excluded or felt that those who should be caring for us have withdrawn their affection that might be the source of it. This is an important one because we're called into communion with others and we're called to love and to be loved by others. And in loving, we take the risk that we may be abandoned, denied, rejected, betrayed, not loved back. So every choice for love is a risk. But Jesus, who has experienced all that we have 
and so understands us, calls us to move beyond our fears into healthy relationships with others. That's the meaning of life. So we've got to get over the fear of separation. The fifth one we're talking about is ego diminishment. Uh, we just feel being shamed. Somewhere or other in our lives, we've gained the idea, if somebody shames me, then I am diminished. Example of this is when we won't do something like talk in front of other people because we feel ridicule and that, that if we don't do well enough, that this will threaten our sense of self and our own sense of being lovable and acceptable. Oh yeah, we all know that feeling. But the truth is, and this is important, our identity is found in being known as beloved disciples of Jesus. That is our identity. That's our core. That God has willed us, each one of us, as we are, into existence. And he upholds us and he loves us. So we must be lovable. No matter what, no matter how bad the talk is or whatever we're doing. But often our ego may get in the way of us doing something or loving. We, we fear loss of face and loss of status. But Jesus says, unless a grain of wheat falls upon the ground and dies, it cannot produce more grain. Ah, scary scripture. For example, how many times do we go to a gathering and we just go, oh, don't give me a word because I don't want to have to go up the front. I might look stupid. We fear diminishment of self. But in reality, because of God's love, we have nothing to fear. Prayer to Mother Mary for the end of the pandemic. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God, in the present tragic situation, when the whole world is prey to suffering and anxiety. We fly to you, Mother of God, and our Mother, and seek refuge under your protection. Virgin Mary, turn your merciful eyes towards us amid this coronavirus pandemic. Comfort those who are distraught and mourn their loved ones who have died and at times are buried in a way that grieves them deeply. Be close to those who are concerned for their loved ones who are sick and who, in order to prevent the spread of the disease, cannot be close to them. Fill with hope those who are troubled by the uncertainty of the future and the consequences for the economy and employment. Mother of God and our Mother, pray for us to God, the Father of mercies, that this great suffering may end and that hope and peace may done anew. Plead with your divine Son as you did at Cana so that the families of the sea and the victims be comforted and their hearts be open to confidence and trust. In the present tragic situation, when the whole world is prey to suffering and anxiety, we fly to you, Mother of God and our Mother, and seek refuge under your protection. Protect those doctors, nurses, health workers, and volunteers who are on the front line of this emergency and are risking their lives to save others. 
support their heroic effort and grant them strength, generosity, and continued health. Be close to those who assist the sick night and day, and to priests who, in their pastoral concern and fidelity to the gospel, are trying to help and support everyone. Blessed Virgin, illumine the minds of men and women engaged in scientific research, that they may find effective solution to overcome this virus. Support national leaders that with wisdom, solicitude, and generosity, they may come to the aid of those lacking the basic necessities of life and may devise social and economic solutions inspired by farsightedness and solidarity. Virgin Mary, turn your merciful eyes towards us amid this coronavirus pandemic. Comfort those who are distraught and mourn their loved ones who have died. Mary, most holy, stir our consciences so that the enormous funds invested in developing and stockpiling arms will instead be spent on promoting effective research on how to prevent similar tragedies from occurring in the future. Beloved Mother, help us realize that we are all members of one great family and to recognize the bond that unites us so that in a spirit of fraternity and solidarity we can help to alleviate countless situations of poverty and need. Make us strong in faith, persevering in service, constant in prayer. Mary, consolations of the afflicted. Embrace all your children in distress and pray that God will stretch out his all-powerful hand and free us from this terrible pandemic so that life can serenely resume its normal course. To you who shine on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope, do with and trust ourselves. O Clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, Amen. Through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross and the prayers of Our Lady, we will all be freed from the curse, filled with joy, love, and receive the blessings of Abraham, which God blessed in all things. Exaltation, healed, the ability to endure suffering and still bear fruit, prosperity, victory, humility, and favor of God. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. If you have an adventure with Jesus, please send to our team your audio, video, or lettering on email wearewithtravelingwithjesus at gmail.com. Thank you. Dear brothers and sisters, those are the readings for today. We hope you enjoy it and see you again tomorrow from We Traveling with Jesus. Goodbye.